How's it going guys? Here we're looking at another one of the big trades that went down yesterday. The San Jose Sharks trading for Evander Kane. Now, I was actually really surprised by the return. As you can see there, uh, the Buffalo Sabres got a conditional 2019 first, conditional 2024th, and then Danny O'Regan, who's basically just there for the roster spot. And when you compare that to say the Thomas Tatar trade, where the Red Wings got a first, second, and third, it seems like Buffalo just did not get enough. Now obviously Tatar is locked up, where Kane is a pending UFA, but I think like attitude problems have to be some sort of like consideration where some teams just don't want to trade for him as I thought for sure uh, they'd be getting a first round pick. So as you can see here, Kane's trade value is decent, uh, 26 years old, 84 overall, again 5.25 million uh, for this year only that he's becoming a UFA. His role there is a second line forward, honestly I think you could even call him a first line forward, especially early in the year he was just going off, uh, scoring like point per game pace. Fourth overall pick back in 2009 by the Atlanta Thrashers, and like I was saying his contract is expiring, so it actually has to do with one of the conditions. Um, so right now it's considered a 2019 first. Now that's only if San Jose resigns him. If San Jose does not resign him, it actually becomes a 2019 second. And I feel like Kane will probably not resign because he might as well test the free agency market. So I'm not sure exactly what happens if he doesn't resign before July 1st. Test free agency and then it turns out the Sharks just end up signing him in free agency. Like would that be a way around it possibly? They only give up a second but then still keep Kane because he did test the market. Uh, that's kind of confusing, so I'm going to assume he'll just test free agency and not re-sign with them, as there's really no reason for him not to, he might as well. So, we'll try first with the 2019 second. Uh, the other condition is a 2024th. Now, this one's kind of weird. Basically, they can choose to either trade the 2024th, or if, say, at the 2020 draft, there's like an awesome guy they want at the fourth round, they can instead make it a 2021 third. But I feel like they'd probably rather just give up the fourth round pick uh, than a third round pick. And then the other guy involved, Daniel Reagan, he is definitely just there for the roster spot. As far as I can tell, basically just an AHL player. No value here. 23 years old, 71 overall. High AHL top six. It was a fifth round pick. So right here's what the trade looks like with a second and a fourth. I do not think this is going to be enough to get Vander Kane. It's not. So we'll pretend, I guess, these Sharks do resign Kane, in which case it is a 2019 first. Um, this actually might get it done. The first has a lot more value. Okay, so yeah, now it's a lot more fair. Plus Buffalo wants that first round pick. This is on hard trade difficulty as well. Uh, we'll see if they say yes. Trade still rejected. I'm kind of surprised. So let's say fourth round, there's an awesome player they want. Uh, so it becomes a 2020, or sorry, 2021 third. So far from now. This, they want the pick. Is this enough? I think it should be. Like the value is actually on Stark's side now. And still no though. So that's kind of surprising. Taking back Kane's full contract, even with the first and the third, best case scenario. Uh, Buffalo still says no in game. Actually, guys, I just realized I made a mistake. It's supposed to be a 2020 third or a 2019 fourth. So uh, next year's draft, if they like somebody, they take them in 2019 or 2020 third. That makes more sense. 2021 so far from now, even though that is the pick. They got uh, Detroit got a 2021 third in the Tatar deal. I doubt one year up matters. Yeah, so still rejected. Now we're going to try to trade from Buffalo's perspective. So might as well start with the best case scenario, then work our way down. Uh, so best case would be a 2019 first as well as a 2020 third. Um, I think they'd rather the 2023rd at least instead of the 2019 fourth. Um, so here we go. Value is actually on Zayn Jose's side. So I think both teams might reject this, which I guess so is pretty fair trade. They do reject that. So we'll try, um, we'll say, I guess, Kane doesn't resign. We'll go 2023rd with the 2019 second. I think Zayn Jose will probably say yes to this. This is a pretty fair deal to get Kane. And they do say yes. So that'll probably be what ends up. Like I was saying, I think Kane will for sure test free agency. And then the fourth in 2019 or the third in 2020 really isn't much of a deal breaker. Honestly, though, I do think this trade's pretty fair, although I expected Buffalo to get more for Vander Kane. I think just maybe teams not liking his attitude or something definitely played a factor. The other thing, though, that could worry me, I guess, about the trade for the Sharks then is that they're really not that secure in a playoff spot. Like right now, they're second in the Pacific, but. Uh, they got Calgary, Anaheim, both right behind them within a couple points. Uh, same with LA, who's trying to like you know make that push in. So they definitely could fall out. At which point, if they miss the playoffs, this trade is definitely not going to look good. So love to hear what you guys think. Like I was saying, I think uh, both teams maybe this could end up bad for. Like you know, Buffalo should have got more. San Jose if they miss. So I guess looking at it like that, it's a fair trade. But as always, let me know what you guys think about the trade in the comments section. Other than that, thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, leave a thumbs up. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.